about 30 seconds behind, and I think we are good. Okay, so we are live today here with Educators Drinking Coffee uh, this morning. I am uh, joined here by Mrs. Amanda Morris, a former colleague of mine, so I'll let her tell a little bit about herself. Welcome. Uh, I uh, appreciate you having me on here, Juan, but uh, any anytime that I'd be laying in bed, I'm like, oh, let me check see if Juan's on there. Um, but uh, so I originally from Salisbury, uh, moved to Greenville um, in 99 to go to college and um, pretty much started my career in Greenville. Um, after I finished at ECU, I was hired at North Pitt um, where you and I met and we kicked off. We had a, a huge incoming teacher group that year, which I thought was great. And we were all... Um, a lot of us were first year, second year teachers, and um, that's kind of where it started. So um, I spent 13 years at North That's Pitt. incredible. That's incredible. Yeah. I, I, 13 I, I, years. Uh, I think I was on principal number five. And <laughs> um, I saw a lot of change over the years. And um, I, my last year there was in 2017. So 2017-18, I was hired by East Wake in Wake County and spent a year there. And then I was, um, through the grapevine, was able to uh, get an interview with um, Panther Creek. And that's where I'm currently at right now. So uh, still in Wake County and it's been great. Um I had just gotten to the point where I was really burnt out and needed a needed a huge change, and it was so. Um, it, it does come a point in time uh, in your careers where uh, you do need a, a change in scenery. Yeah. Um, but um, you know, one of the biggest things. So I'm trying to think. Your first year was 2004, 2005. 2004. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. So that's the same year we both came in, and that's incredible. I started doing the math yesterday when I did look at your bio. I'm like, wow. Um, 13, you know, it's yeah. been that long because I was there only for six years. Wow. Um, yeah, to 2010, 2011. Uh -huh. um, but you're right. A lot of us came in. A lot of new coaches came in um, yeah. and things like that. Well, I had a couple people. My mom always joins in. Feliz Dia Madre. And uh, I had Mr. Harold kind of always comes in. I appreciate it. But yeah, no. Uh, and one of the, through the times that we, you know, we, you and I worked together, uh, I know you coach volleyball. Uh, I can't remember if you helped with softball. It's been so long. Not at North Pitt. No, nope, not at North Pitt. So I um, started my coaching career there as well. Um, was JV volleyball to begin with. Um, Jeremy Shaw was uh, varsity, and I took over JV for a year or two. Um, and then I coached girls basketball uh, with Alan Wooten. And um, okay. we had a nice little – uh, I think it was about five years that we were in the basketball program. And then I was with girls track. Um, so I started with girls track and girls track was the one that I had the longest, which was the 13 years that I was there. Gotcha. Well, it's funny. You mentioned uh, Alan Wooten. Hey. <laughs> Good morning, Alan. What's up, Castillo? Hey, hey. hey. What's so up? We I have another. <laughs> We have another special guest here, Alan Wooten. All three of us worked at North Pitt together as teachers and um, and coaches. And great that I have you both. And I know Amanda had told you this is a little surprise me and Alan put together. But uh, it's, I don't know how long it's been. I know it's been a while since I've seen you guys. Alan has probably been the closest with just the last few years. But um, Alan, tell us a little bit of where you're at now because I know where you're at with people. Um, I'm a history teacher. and. Uh football coach at Havelock High School right near uh, the beach in Craven County. i um, been there for a year as of last Monday. Um, I was at Green Central with Juan prior to that. And then uh, I also teach for the North Carolina Virtual Public School. So this digital right. learning has been a pretty smooth transition. I was going to say, you know, that's really interesting that you have that experience because I feel like that's part of one of the things we should look at. I mean, the North Carolina Virtual Public Schools has been doing this online for a while. What can we take? And I know they do PE, too, mm -hmm. from there to possibly, you know, for the fall, because we don't yeah, know. I think, 
I, I think there's a lot of things we do with the North Carolina Virtual Public School that could be uh, easily fitted into traditional schools as we go through the the changes that we're, we're going to have to make coming into the fall of the next school year and, and until we find a, a vaccine for COVID-19. Um, you know, but there's also some things we do in face-to-face schools that that we could help with the NCVPS. So it's kind of this, you know, the live lectures, the screencasts, you know, I, I had video lectures already done for most of my courses. Um, you know, with my face-to-face school, I use Google Classroom. With my, yeah. you know, with NCVPS, we use Canvas. So, you know, it's not been really hard to integrate those two. If, you know, in the fall, I'm probably going to drive all my classes towards Canvas. It's just easier that way. But, you know, I think there's a lot of digital technology available for us. I think the big thing right now is just so overwhelming with how many options we have. And, you know, just I think that's really the most stressful thing. Like, what do our kids like better? What 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 can right. they easily access and navigate? And, you know, it's not really for us, but for them, you know, do they like Canvas? Do they like Google Classroom? Um and I'm sure I'm missing a few, but I'm sure there's other options digitally as well. Um, you know that, but yeah, I think there's some some courses NCVPS already has made it, and they're doing a lot of integrative uh, Zoom sessions with with face to face teachers, yeah. showing them how to use Canvas, showing them some digital techniques. Uh, and I think this summer would be a great time to to create some some uh, small group sessions to kind of maybe force some more integration there. I think we have to. I mean, you know how it is. If you're not comfortable with the technology, it makes it extremely hard. And the kids know it when you struggle. Yes. And uh, me and Amanda were talking before we went online. You know, and a lot of kids want to do the least amount of work possible. And they, when they know you struggle with a certain platform, they're going to make that go really slow and not much is going to get done. Um, one of the things I did when and now that I have you also here, Alan and Amanda, um, you guys were great at building relationships with your kids. Um, and I think that also translated into the virtual because when you build that relationship, then it's easier. The kids are, are held more accountable because they believe in you, that they trust you, and they know you're looking out for them. So I just want for anybody looking, because you guys are two really good examples of how do you look to build relationship with your students? So let's start with Amanda. Um, you know, just looking back, uh, I, this happens to be a funny story, but, you know, it's their first year, my first year at North Pitt, I had one of the group of seniors there, and um, there was a few that kind of stuck around, they were like, wonder who this girl is, um, um, Alan, you can, you know, agree that, you know, uh, Shakia and Leah and Hannah and that group, um, they just, they bought into what we were saying. I mean, it's not that we were doing anything special, but I think they knew that we cared and they appreciated that we were real. Um, we didn't try to like play any kind of uh, stories or, or anything towards them. I mean, we were straight up with them and I think they appreciated that because I guess maybe they might not have had it, but, um, or, they, they just gave us a chance and we literally, um, I'm still friends with them like adults today. We're friends, but you know, it's, it's funny because I don't try and be all sappy and, and nice, like, uh, and, and just uh, babyish towards them. Um, and that's one reason why I went to high school because I'm able to have a conversation with them. I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to explain things. If you have a question, ask, and, you know, we're going to work things through as a young adult because that's what you are, and you're going to be treated like that. So I think that might be a little bit of, of that along with, I guess, I joked with them and <laughs> tried to be, you know, uh, a light in their day and um, funny and, and a funny story for that. We had a softball uh, Zoom call the other day, and it was a show and tell. And so I held up, um, I don't know if you can see this, but this color is a bright color. I said, you know, I really hope that I'm, I'm being a bright light in somebody's life or somebody's day so that they will, you know, just feel happy. So. Yeah. How about you, Al? Um, yeah, I think the relationship piece is a little more tough 
Um, but I, I mean, it's, it's definitely doable. You know, it, it's something that it's going to change. You know, you, you've got to adapt. We're going to have to, to change a little bit here and there. Um, and, and then as far as the, the accountability with the kids, I, I mean, I think, I think the fall will be much either easier if we have some sort of modified virtual face-to-face -face action going on, which is what it's appearing to be like, because they know that, you know, the, the worst thing about when it happened this semester was, you know, the kids pretty much knew they could take the grade they had when they left and that was theirs. So it was really, you know, and, and, you know, once they found, and my virtual kids found it out a lot before my, a lot earlier than my face to face kids. Yeah. But once they found that out, you know, it, it's kind of like communism. If you tell somebody they're going to get paid without doing any work, yeah. guess what? They're going to take the paycheck and not do any work. And so, yeah. um, I think that'll be the e I think the, that's probably the most frustrating thing for teachers right now is, you know, the lack of accountability for the students. You know, you, you do all these lessons, you get everything prepared, you meet with them, you know, 17 of your 28 show up. And the ones that don't show up know that, hey, I'm going to pass anyway because I had this when I left. I, I think the, the, the great thing going into the fall is they'll understand that now the grades are back like they used to be. And I'm not saying we, that, that we did it the wrong way. The compassion and, and that that needed to be showed during this time period, I get. But I think once we have, you know, credit, course credit, and grades to to hold students accountable, I really think that'll make the fall much much easier for us as teachers to get kids to show up for everything, and it'll it'll be a lot more normal per se as far as what we're used to seeing in, in the school setting. I agree. I mean, I think uh, setting the I don't want you to say the standard, but the parameters of the, the remote learning. And I think we need to have harder deadlines to, to have more accountability. Right now, like you said, we are very flexible. Try not to hold the kids harmless um, by, you know, you, you have this assignment you have till the end of the week. I mean, that's how sometimes some teachers did it. Oh, yeah. And even if they weren't turned in at the end of the week, they're OK, just get it in. You know what I mean? As soon as you can, because we know sometimes kids were overwhelmed with certain classes. So. But I think we have to have expectations in the future. We know we have five virtual days next year, at least at minimum. You know what I mean? And so it has to be set from the, the tone has to be set that whether it's at the end of midnight, at the end of that day, things need to be turned in. Otherwise, like you said, let's say if Friday is a virtual day and we're not going to hold them accountable for make, doing the work during the virtual day, they're not going to do it. You know, they're, they're going to wait till whenever. So I agree with you. Um, one thing I like I said, talking about relationships, and Al, I know you don't talk a lot about this, but I do remember this. Um, you with coaching football, and I remember I think it was the one night that we left because Al and I and Coach Bo went to see Notre Dame play North Carolina. Um, <laughs> and, and the football game, I think it was Goldsboro, went into overtime. It just overtime. did not want to end. Um, <laughs> but you guys, before we left. You guys, I think it was you, your mom, at least, and probably your brother, made peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for the kids because it had been such a long time. And I know you guys do that. So, I mean, to me, it goes, you guys and both you and Amanda have gone well above and beyond, uh, you know, just being a teacher and being a coach. You, those are ways you guys really have shown how much you care. Um, and it shows because, again, Amanda, you talked about still being friends with some of those students that are incredible. They're in their 30s now, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I saw one. Come I on, saw Mom. one. I saw one at a uh, professional development here in here in Raleigh. Uh, literally, probably two months ago, and I looked over and I'm like, "That can't be her." It was Danielle Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's 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 incredible. I it's funny, you know. I had um. When I was uh, a couple of years ago, when I was principal at Pac Tolls, and I was actually looking to hire a teacher and did not know much about her as a teacher. Uh, she was actually had been at Welcome. And through our first course of students that came through, I did the math and I said, these students would have been students of this teacher. So, and one of them was um, Brian. And uh, gosh, now I can't remember this other girl. But, anyways, I'm friends with them on Facebook. And I use it as a resource. I called them up and said, tell me about this teacher, you know, and your thoughts about it. And I said, I need you to be completely honest. And one of them had a kid at Pactola, so I knew she would be 
tell me yes or no or you know so i use that as a reference and like i said still having that relationship uh Brittany, i can't remember her last name right now but uh it's it's important um and we, we just had some good times there not taking ourselves too seriously um the other day i mentioned about the banana eating contest i don't know if you heard that one. <laughs> that was hilarious i i tell you it was a perfect storm i remember you sitting that next to me i don't know if you don't like bananas or you were full from lunch but uh I thought, i'm like i have this I have this. The next thing I know, I'm eating bananas in front of the whole school. I'm pretty sure uh, you're the only one that was eating one. Yeah. <laughs> Did you all know way ahead of time, or I never yeah, knew? Bo had planned it. Oh, okay. Okay. That was <laughs> but uh, oh, and you know, we we gone already almost 15 minutes. Uh, I am drinking coffee. This is still the same coffee I've been drinking all week from the outskirts of Medellin. What are you drinking, Amanda? Uh, yeah, it's an iced coffee, and I do have some water, but I do uh, have to represent. Thank you very much. <laughs> there you go. Yes, what about you, Alan? The, the McDonald's special, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Poor man's coffee. I was, uh, I was telling you. Now, is that a small, medium? This is the large. The large, okay. And, and, and I've been talking about this, and I've never, until now, like, this is a fairly small cup, and it's one of these silly cups. It's like a skier. But... Uh, in Colombia, this would be considered like a large wow. uh, oh, yeah. coffee. You know, we take small sips, uh, I mean, small little little cups and stuff like that. So we drink several throughout the day, but it's probably equivalent to one that you're drinking, Alan. But, oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's incredible how much as teachers we, we drink coffee and, and, and other things um, <laughs> when school is over. Um, <laughs> so, um, so tell me, uh, Amanda, a little bit about – you're coaching now. Uh, how are you trying to get through these times? And Alan, I'll get with you in a sec. Um, well, consider so this year was a little different for us, um, softball wise. So last year, my first year at Panther Creek, we had a JV team. Um, we were a little bit low on numbers last year. Um, and then come rolling into this season, uh, we were just unsure. Um, we had a good group of number, uh, kids that were coming to off-season workouts and granted this year I did not have any fall sports so I've gotten down to one sport and I'm thankful for that because like I said the amount of years that I know you know Alan and I put in that was just to the point where I'm like three seasons every single year yeah, 13 you know, years it was it was crucial um so we only had a varsity squad this year. Um, now we had 18 on the varsity squad, but um, it, it just worked out how it was. So we've had a lot of Zoom calls. And, well, Wake County has uh, pretty much told us Google Meet is our platform that we can use. Um, so we've had a lot of calls, uh, weekly calls with the girls. Um, most of them, if not all of them, are on the calls every week. I think that they need that. Um uh, we still use the remind text and send out random text messages to the to the girls um, just to check in. Uh, it, just because it's a, a big school, um, granted we're around 2,800, I think, and then coming from North Pitt and East Wake, East Wake was about 1,400 maybe. Um, these kids still have the same around about issues they just have like they crave attention they need they need somebody to know you know that they're thinking about them and things to that nature so we've like i said remind text um the google meet calls we've had different show and tell type things on the calls where we'd ask them you know this is your question for the day and we'll go around and let them you know talk a little bit and um they just need that interaction with the team that they're that they started with and um so it was tough on them um just not knowing and then we were actually supposed to have a game that friday and then we had practice on thursday everything was good for friday and then fr thursday after practice we got uh we got a message that was like uh they decided to um go ahead and cancel it because we were it was Wake County versus the Durham County School. Uh, yeah. 
Oh, Mike, uh, Mike King has stopped by, says North, uh, North Pitt Reunion. So yeah. <laughs> and I live out here in the Outer Banks. So once in a while I've seen them. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, one thing I feel bad is for seniors now with volleyball, of course, it's in the fall. So they got their season, but you know, think about, think about baseball players, softball players, right. uh, track athletes, uh, that they really, I feel really bad for them. So what about you, Alan? Football is a whole nother beast. Yeah. Um, luckily I'm at a, a, a very football friendly school as far as, you know, getting my kids in the weight room during the day. So I actually have minus five or six who are in like the AP Calc or AP US fourth period. All of my varsity football players are in my fourth period weightlifting class. Okay. And so um, we meet every day, just like a regular course would. Um, we give them their lifts on Google form. And they, you know, they have a, you know, a body, a body weight lift and they have a, a, if they have access to weights, they have a weight lift, they can choose to do either or. And then um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we do football breakdowns for an hour and a half offense and defense. And, you know, um, you know, I don't know at Green Center or North Pitt, if that, that would have happened. You know, I met a school yeah. where because yeah. of the, the investment in, in, in the athletics, they do a really good job of balancing athletics and academics and, they understand the, the positives of both. And, you know, it's, it's a, you know, we have, you know, a really, you know, we have 130 players in our program. So uh, we, we meet with our JV kids and eighth graders every Thursday on Zoom from four to six. We'll meet with them this afternoon, um, go over just basic team philosophies and things like that. And so, because usually right now we'd be lifting our eighth graders at night from six to seven thirty three nights a week. And, those are the things we're missing. When you talk about the relationships, you know, yeah. right now I would know all my eighth graders who are going to be ninth graders, all 40 of them. I'd have already hung out with them eight or ten times. And, you know, now if we don't get the summer, we're going to hit August 1 and, and you know, or, or whenever we're allowed to start it, you know. And, and the, the relationships you're going to have to build while you're, you're integrating everything else. And, you know, yeah. the biggest, I think, problem with coaches is we're all planners, you know, schedules and, and organized and, and the, the ambiguity and the, the the not having clarity of when you can start back or that I think that's the most annoying thing and I, and I know it's not something you want to press but you know you know I'd rather know a plan even if I didn't like it than, than yeah. just sit here like are we gonna move are we gonna move football to the spring which is a discussion yeah then move baseball and track to the fall like if that decision is going to be made, that's something that needs to happen Soon. sooner rather than later, because we're going to, have to, I mean, planning doesn't happen overnight. For, no. And so that I just, that's the, the big struggle right now. That's why I love that, at least from the school side of it, even though there are people that probably didn't like the plan some schools put out mm-hmm. within three days, we had a plan where how we were going to finish school the rest of the year. Yeah. And, it, and, and we knew it. You know, and not mm-hmm. saying you had to agree with everything that was going to happen, but we had an understanding of, of how yeah. it was going to play out. And, and, and the, like I said, just not knowing, like, yeah. you know, when we can start back, when we can, can see our kids face to face, you know, whether it's 10 or 12, you know. And, and the other thing is, you mm-hmm. have other states doing so many different things. You know, Virginia has canceled all summer workouts. Tennessee starts on June the 10th. You know, South Carolina mm-hmm. starts on June the 13th, I think. And so, mm-hmm. I mean, the other thing, you know, just the, the High School Athletic Association the other day, you know, left it up to the individual counties, the LEAs. Yeah. And I, I think that's where the big problem is because it needs to be everybody in North Carolina starts working out now or not because you, you can't have, you know, so-and-so county starting on June the 6th and, yeah. you know, this county doesn't start till August 1st. That, that, the, the equity is not there. And so no, no. I, I don't think they should have done. I don't think that's the best policy moving forward. I, I think there needs to be. This is when North Carolina sports are going to start for North right. Carolina. Not oh well, Craven County starts then, Pitt County starts then, Dare County starts here. I, mm-hmm. You know the equity piece has got to be there. You know I, I know those decisions aren't easy to make, but you can't just pass the buck. You got to take some responsibility. And, and say this is when North Carolina sports are going to start. So it'd be interesting to see where we go the next few weeks. Yeah, it's it's, it's frustrating not knowing. And you know, one of the biggest things I hope is you know we have a couple about three weeks left that we have a, a decent idea of 
what the fall is going to look like. Like you said, we, we may not have um, the, the specific plan, but really have a framework of what it's going to be, because that's going to be very important. You know, as we get into summer, a lot of us are burnt out. We want a break. You know what I mean? And I know we the way it's we're going, we're going to have to put some work during the summer. And that's that's a lot asking for people having gone through this. Um, just before I go, Carol, Carol, Carolina, I'm trying to say it in English. Carolina, stop by. Thank you. Uh, Carolina Herrera, another good friend of yours, Amanda. Yeah. Um, another friend of mine, Robert Navarro, back from when I was um, back in Florida. He's asking what kind of coffee. I said I stole the Colombian coffee. It's called La Florida. Uh, it's just on the outskirts of Medellin. Alan, you're drinking McDonald's and iced coffee for Amanda. So, uh, And I always try to wear a T-shirt for a school, try to promote universities, ASU over in Arizona. Uh, I had a chance to go there last spring break. I don't know if you guys probably traveled more than I have, but I love the weather there. I know it's hot, but it does. But it's a different kind of hot. It is. It was like 100 degrees, and I'm like, this is not feel. Now, lo and behold, I wasn't standing on top out in the sun. But if you're in the shade, you would not know. Now, 100 degrees in Florida, no, you're you're like in the inferno. <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, um, yeah, it's it's. Going back to, to the athletics, uh, and that we know athletics plays such a huge part in these kids' career in high school, and, and that's what sometimes keeps them really just getting through yeah. through the day, through the year, and, and seeing them succeed. And, and, and Alan, you, you know, you're in a school where you're having athletes go on to, you know, quite a few athletes go on to play in the next level, and this is hurting them. You know, what I mean, because anytime you're out. Um, it's less exposure they have, but like you're talking about the inequity of if you guys are having to wait till August to begin workouts, no matter how much they train now, it's not going to be anything like if you've been training them throughout the summer. Good, good. Um, so, you know, we have a few more minutes here. Uh, any plans when school year is over? I know, I know with football you're still thinking about, but uh, I'm looking to take at least a, a week, almost week and a half break. Uh, what about yeah, you guys? Yeah, I, I definitely like to uh, get out from a computer or feel like that I have to be tied to something that's electronic just to make sure. Because, I mean, I was just looking at my phone. A kid has sent me a remind message asking about an assignment, which, you know, I mean, that's all well and fine. I would I would much rather them send a message and ask than just not, not to do it. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to just sit on a beat somewhere and just sit. <laughs> How about you, Al? Uh, the week of July 4th is usually the week we take off, and then we'll get back at it, go to the beach, stay around, take my kids yeah. out there, and that's about it. I don't know how you do it. Uh, I, I always talk, tell people when, uh, when I was at North Pitt and my wife, and she the thing is she never saw me coach before we got married. I, I used to do travel, and travel takes year-round. So it wasn't until, you know, I was at North Pitt and she's like, sometimes like, do you really have to coach every day? I'm like, listen, no matter how bad we were, we still want to get better. Um, I said, just be glad I'm not a football coach. I said, because I wouldn't be home like Sunday evenings. Um, as you guys always have those weekend meetings, which is crazy. But I know, listen, you you want to improve. You want to get better. You have to sacrifice that. And as you know, football, like I said, it's a whole nother beast. Um but no, one of these days we're going to have to just talk again about, I love hearing some of your stories, Alan, when you were in high school wrestling and who you had to wrestle. Uh, <laughs> those stories are hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I'm good with that. Uh, you know, we, we had good times. Um, they were playing um, tricks on each other uh, in North Pitt. So. <laughs> but it's been good. It's been good talking to you guys. Um, it's been a long time. Uh, we may have to do this offline one day. Get a bunch of people that yeah. came in that year. Because I'm trying to think that year. I know I came in. You guys came in. Paul came in. Your brother, Alan, was there already. Uh, but probably maybe um, a year. Yeah, oh, Mark. Year. Uh, Mark. I don't know. Sutton came in with us. Yeah. Sutton, so, yeah. Um, Julie George. To... There was like, there was like yeah. nine yes. of us. Yeah. yeah. That was a huge yeah. group. Yeah. But remember the 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 – licensing with uh trying to get our C CDL, CDL was, license <laughs> with old 
with old Coach Dupre. You remember that? <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was hilarious. You know, I don't know if I ever told you, but the first time, you know, I was – Coach Butler, you know, allowed me to go to – gosh, where was it? They're called the Seahawks out in Pamlico. That was like my first road Southside. trip. Southside. You were at Southside. Southside. We went to play Southside, and getting there was fine. You know, it's a small road. You're going past Washington and stuff. But on the way back, because there's no lights, no street lights, man, I went off the road like several <laughs> times. I couldn't fit that bus on the road. My kids are freaking out. I'm like, I'm just making sure you guys are away, you know. Uh, then also um, going to Southwest Edgecombe. Oh. Um, I asked Ron, I said, hey, how do I get there? He's like, when you get to Kanita, you know, you make a left or whatever. Man, I kept going. I, I got almost to Tallboro because I was looking for Kanita. And I called him. And he says, come to like, man, uh, I said, you, you, you gotta be, you gotta tell me what, literally what, what it says. Um, and then that night I left Southwest Edgecombe and I ended up in Tarboro instead of coming back because it was dark. I didn't know I made a left instead of a right. And, uh, this one kid I had, Enrique, Enrique I want to say Iglesias, but I know it wasn't Iglesias, Enrique, uh, he's the one that guided me back to school because I had no idea where I was. I know I ended up by uh, Edgecombe Community College. Oh, you went all the way back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, but anyways, but I had some, some just about every time. Oh, one time I was supposed to go to North Lenore. I ended up in um, Kinston. Uh, and Is this before Google Maps? Well, I couldn't use it while I was driving. But yeah. Yeah, I guess <laughs> before Google Maps, I guess I didn't they have had a <laughs> But uh, mm -hmm. some crazy things. So, anyways, but again, I do want to thank you guys coming in this morning. We'll have to do it again. Um, this is uh, Educators Drinking Coffee. So, enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, I know you guys got to get busy, get going with your classes. I got a PLC coming up at nine. So, uh, you guys take care. Like I said, we'll, we'll have to do this again, whether it's offline or something. Yeah. Um, yes, sir. So. Good talking to you guys. Same here. Yep. Good to you see you. Care. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye.